using the TI-84 or the 84 plus as the calculator you have um, your calculator obviously will not find derivatives the same way a TI-89 or the TI Inspire can find derivatives of a function. But your calculator can find something called a numerical derivative. And what it's basically what your calculator is doing is doing a little bit of algebra. Um, well, and that's not even quite correct. It's doing some arithmetic. It's programmed to calculate a difference quotient when asked for a derivative. Um, and what your calculator is the difference quotient that your calculator is actually using is something called a symmetric difference quotient. So bear with me just for a second while I kind of explain what that is. If I have a function, maybe like that, that's our, equal, our function y equal f of x. And if we are asking the calculator to find a value for a derivative, and it's a numerical derivative, so it's only going to be able to find a number, which would be the slope of the line tangent to that curve at a particular point. And I don't want that that color, so hang on. Ah. Select that and change that to, let's make it red. Okay. So a numerical derivative is an estimate for the slope of a line tangent to a curve at a particular point. And as I mentioned earlier, your calculator is programmed to find something called the symmetric. Wow. Okay, that's terrible. Come back. difference quotient. Okay, and a difference quotient is exactly what it sounds like. It's a quotient of differences. So your calculator does this says, all right, if you want me to find the value of a derivative at to function f of x at x at this particular value of x, I'm going to go just a little bit to the right of that value of x and just a little bit to the left of that value of x, and I'm going to find the slope of the secant line that goes through those two points. Come on, pen, right, there we go. <clears throat> so we're going to call this little distance right here h. So the calculator takes a look at x at a point x plus h and a point x minus h. And it finds the value of the change in the y values f of x plus h minus f of x minus h divided by the change in the x values, which would be 2h. So the calculator basically straddles the point in question and calculates secant line slope. Now, if your two points are very, very close to x, if a, in other words, if h is a very tiny number, um, then you're going to get a pretty good estimate most of the time. However, there are some times that your calculator does not give you good information. Um, take for example, uh, let's see, what function is this? Is that the one I want? Show me the function. Yes, absolute value of x. We know from previous experience that the derivative does not exist for this function at x equals zero, but if you ask your calculator okay, to calculate a numerical derivative for this function um, at x equals zero, let's see what happens. To, uh, to access 
the keystrokes, let's see, it's math, and then if you scroll down that list, I believe it's option 8, let's see if we can find it. Option 8, indirect, oh crap, come back. Indirect. All right, so the delay in the machine is just driving me crazy. All right, n deriv is short for numerical derivative. Now, if you have the newest operating system in the TI-84, your calculator is going to look like this, where you have to input what variable. Okay, we want to differentiate with respect to x. The function we need is absolute value of x, which you could either type in here, or because our function is already entered in y1 for us, did something wrong. Okay, um, you can just tell it use the equation in y1 and then specifically we want x equals 0. So now if we press enter the calculator tells us that if, come back here, view, always on top, there we go, if f of x is the absolute value of x then f prime of x f prime of 0 equals 0. Now, if you think about what the calculator is actually doing there, you understand why it returns a value of 0. Here's what's happening. Here's the point in question. So the calculator says, all right, I'm going to move 8 just a little bit over to the right and get this point. And I'm going to move that same amount of space over to the left and I'll get this point. And then I'm going to calculate the slope of the line that goes through those two points. Well, clearly that slope is going to be zero, but we know that f prime of zero should not exist. So it's just it's important for you to understand what your calculator is doing. Now, if you I mentioned earlier, if you had the latest operating system in, in the TI-84, that's something that you can download and upgrade your calculator if you want to, and I'll be happy to give you more information about how to do that. Or if, if your calculator is new, purchased sometime this summer, you already have the, uh, the greatest, uh, not the greatest, but the most recent operating system. For those of you that don't have that operating system, this is what you'll see. Now let me go back and change my calculator to classic view. Okay, we still access the numerical derivative feature from the math menu, it's math 8, but this is what it looks like on your screen. We have to tell it what function, so we can still tell it to use the equation in y1, and then we type in, it's been a while since I've done this, I hope I remember how to do this right. Variable is next, and then you tell it what value, so it's function variable value. Yeah, that worked. So if your calculator is using one of the older operating systems, it's still programmed to do the right thing, well, to do the right thing, which is give you a wrong answer here, um, but it just looks very much different. <clears throat> so that's n deriv. Well, just it would be worth writing that down somewhere so you remember what it is you need to put in. Now, I do all of this with the calculator, the section you noticed when you looked at the title of this is uh, derivatives of trig functions. Your textbook authors go into a lot of detail deriving the derivative formulas for your trig functions. I don't want to spend that much time, so what I want you to do is if we're going to start with the derivative of sine of x. All right, had to pause there and find, figure out how to get a new page. Um, calculator, the computer's just having a hard time this afternoon. All right, if we want to differentiate, we want to find 
the derivative of sine of x. I'm going to ask the calculator to graph the derivative of sine of x. Now again, your calculator cannot, at least if you're using the 84, it cannot find the actual equation for the function that is the derivative. It, it can only find the equation, um, excuse me, it can only find the value of a derivative at a specific point. Well, we can get around that by asking for, and my calculator is still in classic mode, so it's going to look like it did last year. If I want the numerical derivative, the function I want the derivative of is sine of x, oops, sine, come on, sine of x, okay, the variable is x, and I want it evaluated at every x. So I'm going to look at this in the trig window, which is zoom 7. Okay, and very slowly we're going to get a graph of the derivative of sine of x. Now, my question to you is, what function does that look like? I think it looks like cosine of x. To double check that, to make sure, I'm going to, you know, just because it's easy, I'm going to ask the calculator to graph cosine of x. Okay, And what I think I'm going to see is the same curve show up again, which means it's not going to look very different to me, so I'm going to come move my cursor all the way to the left so that you see the little indicator to the left of Y2 is blinking. If I press enter, it's going to change the style of that graph. And there we've got the ball and chain. So I should be able to see that ball travel along the curve. And I think what's going to happen, if I press graph in the calculator actually, there we go. What you see now is the cosine of x is now being graphed on the screen, and you'll see it follows exactly the same path that the graph of sine, uh, excuse, the graph of the derivative of sine did. So, like I say, there's a there's a more involved derivation of the derivative of sine of x in your textbook that you are welcome to read, but for our purposes, I'm comfortable saying that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Now, what I'd like you to do is use your calculator and do change, do the same thing that we just did and derive or, or graph the derivative of cosine of x and make a, an educated guess about what function you think that is. So pause the recording and give that a try. Okay, so you have graphed the numerical derivative of cosine of x. Your graph looks like that, which is, and you can test that out, it's the opposite of sine of x. So these two facts are going to be things that you just need to know. So you need to memorize that the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine. 